implementing interstitial ad to your flutter application is very easy let's learn how to do that and earn some extra money with your app idea If you're interested to learn Flutter or want to become a better mobile developer, consider subscribing this channel and press the bell icon. It really helps me a lot and thousands of developers who are searching for such content. All right, with well, that being said, let's continue with today's topic inside Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and create a brand new page where we will implement interstitial ads. So I'm going to call it quiz page. Now, this is just one of the example. The point here where you should be displaying interstitial ad. A lot of people, they display interstitial on app launch or in between the task, which is really a wrong practice. Interstitial ad should be displayed after an interval or maybe you can think of once the user completes one task and tries to move to another task, right? That time you can display interstitial. So best example is like once the user drops the call or once he finishes level of a game or once he's done editing and he want to save that file. So in between editing, you want, don't want to show the interstitial. Once he has done everything and then he clicks save button, that is the right time you can display ad and earn some money. Well, that was just brief introduction about interstitial ad and where you should be using it. Let's go ahead and connect quiz page from our home page where we have the banner ad, right? So I'm just going to create one button and on pressed event, I will use navigator and move to the quiz page. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and give this application a run so that we can see what we have done so far. And I would also recommend you guys to check part one of this video where I have loaded banner ad. And actually that is that video contains whole setup from Android, iOS to AdMob account. So I will highly recommend you guys to go ahead and check that video first. And also I will put link at the end of this video so you can check later as well. Well, that being said, let's focus on this part of the video. So I'm going to declare interstitial ad and this value is going to be initialized lately in the program. So I'm declaring it with late keyword. And also I will declare one Boolean flag, which initially will be false. So I will initialize here. And this, this just uh, tells the program whether the ad has loaded or not. And we're gonna assign the value later on. All right, so let's go ahead and create a method which will be responsible for initializing the ad. And this is a little bit different than banner ad. We are not using the instance of interstitial ad to initialize, rather we are using the class and then we are calling the load method. Now inside this load method, we have to specify what is the test ID, what is the request and what's going to be the different callbacks when the ad, once the ad is loaded or failed. So for add unit ID, you can use the test ID, which is different for Android and iOS, which is currently hidden behind the scene. But this is something which you set up on ad mob. All right. The most important part here is the ad load callback and this you gonna override. Basically you will provide your own implementation what happens if the ad is loaded or if it is failed. So on loaded, basically we will write our own implementation, but error we can just, uh, you know, print somewhere or log somewhere what, what just happened. Well, let me take a moment to thank all of you guys and especially member of this channel. It really means a lot to me when you take membership of the channel. And if you can't afford that, you can at least hit the like button and write down your feedback in the comment section below, which really helps YouTube algorithm to cater this video to more audience. And that was a bit of self promotion. Let's continue with the topic. So now when init add method is ready, we can call this from a constructor, which means that whenever this page is getting created, that time interstitial add will be loaded and kept in the memory. Now it's time to focus on the most important method, which is on add loaded. So let's go ahead and bring this method on top. So I generally prefer to keep the methods on top of the build. So I know that, okay, this is something kind of a helper method. So what we're gonna do here, once the ad is loaded, we're gonna assign that information, like whatever the ad is loaded to our interstitial ad. And this is the same uh, declaration we did on top line number nine. And along with that, we will also say that is loaded true. Now we can simply bring this interstitial ad on the interface on a click of a button, but we have to make sure that ad is loaded before calling show method on interstitial ad. 
At this point of time, we are almost done with the implementation part. So let's go ahead and check how does it look on application side. So I'm going to play around with the quiz. And after that, I say complete quiz. And here you have the interstitial ad. And because you are still watching the video, I know you are enjoying it. So make sure to give it a thumbs up and write down your feedback in the comment section below. And hold on, don't leave the video yet because we have to figure out the event where user closes the ad because that is when you will continue with the next task. So for that, we're gonna override full screen content callback method. Now this is kind of uh, interesting. You're writing event inside another event, okay? So here we are concerned about these two methods on ad dismissed and on ad fail to show. So let's go ahead and implement the first method here we will get the instance of ad so once the ad is dismissed you can perform whatever task you want to do like you can move to next page and do something like that and what happens when ad failed to show full screen so you will get the ad and you will get the error now in both the situation you have to dispose the interstitial ad so that it doesn't reside in memory forever Fantastic. And as I said earlier, you can find all the setup information step by step in this video right over here. And if you want to understand how to do Google sign in inside your application, you can check this video. And if you want to know more about Flutter and watch some awesome tutorials, consider subscribing this channel right over here. I will see you guys in the next one.